know your prey. I got him! There they are! Go! My spidey sense is tingling. I got him. Can I get out of here? It's September in the Yukon, the most rugged country on the continent. The days are short, it's cold, and the weather changes in a heartbeat. The landscape is unforgiving, the elements are harsh. This could be Man Tracker's toughest chase yet. Man Tracker is a cool headed, cold blooded cowboy. He relies on bush smarts and instinct to get his prey. This matchup, he's tracking these two. Brent and Brian are very fit, very bush smart firefighters. They're trained to keep their cool and work as a team under any circumstances. Tracker has drafted local cowboy Rob Knorr. He's traveled every inch of this wild country, and not just on horseback. Riding my Harley in the, in the Yukon, there's nothing like it. When you get a sunny day and you're cruising around the lake on the windy roads or just ripping down the highway, there's not a better feeling in the world. It's priceless. I've had a lot of adventures as a cowboy, from breaking horses, riding bulls, and being bucked off. <laughs> um, but hunting these guys down, they don't have a chance. Because I got something they don't have. I got a cowboy attitude. And you don't get that in the city. I think I've been uh, training for this my whole life, actually. I love the outdoors, because I do triathlons. Man Tracker is uh, just as determined as I am, and he really is the real deal. The things that he does are not phony, and uh, I'm assuming he's going to be on my tail, and I'll, I'll be waiting for him. I think, uh, you know, with the training and experience I've had with the fire department, uh, it's going to help us here, remaining calm and, uh, and cool and collective. Uh, a few of my good buddies, actually, they call me the, the party in a box. Of course, after uh, a couple of hops, uh, that box pops open and out comes me, and, uh, you know, I guess I've been known to put on the odd show. Let's go. Let's go get him. The landscape and weather have raised the stakes for both tracker and prey. It will be a lot harder for man tracker to find tracks in the cold, hard ground. And for the prey, the bare autumn trees will make it hard to hide. They've got about 40 kilometers to cover in 36 hours. Speed will be of the essence. The prey start off in a sprint and keep up the pace for a long time for this elevation. Their packs are heavy, weighed down with clothing, water, and all-weather gear. Left, 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 right, left. These prey are very confident, and they've got the experience, intensity, and fitness to back it up. There's three peaks off in the distance, and we have to stay to the right of those peaks to get to where we need to go. We're trying to stick to that. Our pack ATP trail here. It's hard to pick up our tracks, we're hoping. We the boys from Company 9. I hope tomorrow we feel this fine. Man Tracker doesn't know where the flare site is, but the lack of vegetation helps him find it pretty quickly. We can get some tracks here. You know, this looks like the start. They've been milling around a bit. Put a deep toe kick right here. Could be they took off at a run. They want to get the hell out of Dodge. Headed that way. And then we'll go take a look. False tracks are the oldest prey trick in the book. But in this cold, hard ground, 
It's a lot harder to establish a direction of travel. I'm not seeing any more tracks. They could have gone back out to the main road. Maybe they've uh, done the right thing and run right down the middle of the track here. It's old. Let me stop and get a bearing. If we take a bearing on that right peak, Let's, let's go, let's move first, okay? Well, while we're in high ground, we should have a good look, because once we get down there, we're not going to see it, right? I, I say let's move. We're not going to miss those peaks. They're huge. Stay in the middle here, it's nice and hard. Trying to pick up any kind of a sign or some shine off the trail or something where they went. I don't see a dang thing. I think they've gone right down the middle, the bugger. These prey are moving very fast. They're putting some distance right. between them and Man Tracker. We gotta leave the road here. Okay. Yeah, right. here we got a little bit of swamp. He's not gonna follow us through here. Man Tracker heads back to the main road. On a hunch, the prey will head there too. There's a little bit of a line in that bit of mud right there. It could be one of their boots. We're kind of grabbing at straws here right now. When you can't find tracks, you uh, you make up tracks. And I hope that's not what I'm doing. It's getting a little bit drier up through here. Yeah. Hopefully we'll put some distance with that swamp, because I doubt he'll follow, follow yeah. us through all that deadwood. I don't think he'll go through that. You know what, we can make up uh, some ground here. We can still jog through this. Yeah, we can. You ready? Let's get going. For the next little while, there was the odd little track here and there. Uh, the ground was so hard, and it was well packed, it was it was almost like we were following what we thought was them. We weren't really getting good tracks at all. Gotta load the mud. There's a good chance that if he is on our tail, he's gonna stick to that road. Man Tracker's got Mother Nature working against him. Noon is fast approaching. The high noon roadblock, the time of day when the lack of shadows makes it near impossible to track. Getting on at noon, sun gets up that high, it's hard to, uh, hard to track. Spidey sense is tingling. This is sketchy. Come on, let's go. Get down. He's just up there, about a kilometer. Oh, he can't see us over here. So that's four hours into it. We spotted him. Stay low. When we first made contact with him, visually it ramped things up you know we knew we were on the run before but now we knew who we were on the run from i'm gonna ride up and look back so i have the sun i'm looking into the sun there's a boot print right there it's really hard to see but there is a boot print right there it's a print of a heel it's what we call shine. From up close, you can't see anything. But Man Tracker pulls a rabbit out of his hat. This clue has given him dead aim on their direction. He moves quickly, and he's back in the game. There's a boot print right there. It's five hours into the chase, and Man Tracker's got his work cut out for him. Tracking in this landscape is tough, and he's got his first strong lead of the day. I don't see any tracks on this trail on the power line. If we don't find tracks by the time we hit this, the top of this knoll, if we don't see them, we'll go back that way because we're ahead of them.
The prey use extreme caution when they get to the exposed power line. And man trackers headed there too. Just thought I'd hear something. Brent thinks he spots horses up oh. ahead. What's that up there? Right, I think I see him. Up there, like 350 feet. They're there. There they are! Go! They're right here. I can't go far. We'll see if we can get them first. Too hard on the horses. Let's go over here. Let's go, come on. We'll go around and get him. And I just didn't see it. And Brent's going, there he is. And I've, we've got our binoculars out. And I'm like, I don't see it. And he said, that's him. I'm like, you're crazy. That's nothing. The whole time, he was coming up behind us. Uh, they both bolted into the bush like a pair of deer. And the one guy, I thought he was just being really arrogant because he was walking in front of me. He walked into the bush. It's like he was totally ignoring us. I didn't hear anything. I'm a little bit shy of hearing on the right-hand side, and he was approaching from the right-hand side. At the time, I thought, you arrogant son of a bee. And I kind of kicked my horse up a little and tried to get in there and go swat him upside the head or something or catch him or do whatever. And I hollered at him, and he didn't even turn around. He just walked into the bush. It's, it's like he was deaf. I don't know kind of pissed me off a little. Now that was exciting. It was pretty exciting because uh, they both had pretty big packs, and that's always good to see. You don't know how much it weighs, but you better believe it's at least 40 pounds when you're carrying a bag that big. It's going to tire them out. It's going to wear them down. And when you have to lift your legs over all the deadfall, they, they can't last forever. Kirch! Yeah, wait up. I got to slow down. These logs are taking their toll on me. He's not gonna follow us in here. He's on us, man. <clears throat> My hamstrings are cramping. We've been going for six hours. I know, buddy, but you wanna win? This is what you gotta do. We don't have to go fast to win. It's not a race, it's a chase. We gotta stay, we gotta stay calm no matter what though. Yeah, well, but when he's coming, you know, it's go time. Okay. Gotta fuel the engine. Let's go, come on, Brad, we gotta keep it up, bud. Just give me a sec. Come on, Brad, we gotta keep the pace going. Boy, when he becomes a captain, he's gonna be cracking the whip. We've been paralleling what we think is their course since we've last seen them. We're going to turn right, take this course here. It's more of a southerly course. Hopefully, we'll intersect their trail. Um, it's an educated guess. Let them keep stomping through this crap. No tire them out. This is probably our last good chance for water before we make nightfall. So. Water came at a good time. They were thirsty. Man Tracker decides to parallel the prey in the direction they headed into the bush. The prey power through. A frigid creek doesn't slow them down. All right, Brian, which way? Oh, we gotta go. Shh, shh. It just seemed like everywhere we looked, there was a horse-shaped tree. 
Uh, every stump looked like he was waiting around the corner for us. We were spooked. Those look pretty fresh, don't they? Yeah. The prey's strategy is to track the tracker. Let's have a look up at the top here. Ah. All right. Yeah. There, I see him. Get down, get down, get down, get down. Is he close? Yeah, right down there. Stay down, get down. Yeah, I got him. He's patrolling. It was kind of neat that we were just hunkered there. He didn't know we were there, and just watching him, it was nice to know where he was. Well, Brian, we know where he is. Yeah. Let's stick to the tree line. We'll keep an eye on him. Let's try not to make too much noise. We kept bebopping out to the power line and checking it out, and we'd go north and check the little trails going into the bush. There was, there was next to nothing. We know he's not coming in here. The prey descend into layers of deadfall, where horses can't go. But it's grueling, and it's only because they're firefighters, trained to scale stairs and ladders, that they can push through. You all right? I kind of got trapped in here. But well, we got to get out of these deadfalls. This is tough going. Lifting your legs up, climbing over these logs, and you're never quite sure if they're going to hold your weight or not, so you have to be careful with every step. But I think we're doing all right. If you look up there, that peak over there, that's where we want to be tonight. We saw a place where we could get up a small ridge, and we thought if we got up there and had a look around 10 or 15 minutes, glassy area, see if we can see them moving or see game moving or something that might be scared out by humans. They have vanished into the bush, so Man Tracker heads up to higher ground to get a better look. We gotta be up here somewhere. If we stay on this side of the valley, we're gonna have a cold wind coming out of the south all night long. We wanna be on the north face of that hill over there so that we're protected. This is the absolute worst this is country. I wouldn't wish it upon my worst enemy. Other than the man tracker. I don't see nothing out there. What do you think, Brad? Let's go back up here. See if we can get a better look. Autumn days are short in the Yukon. The bushwhacking has eaten up valuable time. It will be frigid in the valley when night falls. I heard something. Why don't you ride over that way? Stay in this kind of a clearing. Okay. I'll be on the other side of this little bush here. See if we can flush them out. The prey must make camp on the nearest ridge. And they are on a collision course. I got him! I got him! <laughs> it's the end of chase day one and the prey have been trying to track the tracker all day. As they head up a ridge to camp for the night, man tracker's already there. expertise just he knew where to go he always just knew where to go and in fact he was thinking the same thing I'm gonna get some high ground and try to find these guys we could have probably got down the hill but the bottom was just chocked full of deadfall and big logs and you could hear them crashing down there they were not having a fun time going through there and just by looking at it there was no way we were getting a horse through there there he is up on the ridge right where we were going to camp it's like he's psychic or something so if we're going to sprint, now's our chance. What do you mean? Head down across the valley to where we wanted to go. No, he's right up there watching us. 
Yeah, but he can't, he can't follow us, though. So. But we're kind of dug in like rabbits. We can only assume he's going to anticipate our next move, too. Man Tracker scares the prey off course, and with a frigid Yukon night closing in, every minute counts. Good, at least we know where the buggers are now. Probably darkness is going to catch us. But at least we know where they were. We can always come back here in the morning and pick up their trail from there. Man Tracker has these unflappable firefighters rattled. He's getting the psychological upper hand. Uh, well, really, he's only got close once. We've spotted him. A couple of times. He, probably we spotted him more than he spotted us, really. Had a couple of close calls. Don't want any more of those. At least not today. After the first day, I, I was thinking these guys are going to be sore and bruised and battered and... Ah. Bunch of marks on them. My arm's here. They're probably going to have puncture wounds from their knees down from all the deadfall and the sticks and stuff. It couldn't have been a lot of fun. Um, I'm sure they didn't have a great day. Today was a lot of work. You know, one of the questions I had before doing this was, why don't people go at night? Now I know. It took a lot out of us. and. I mean, my feet are killing right now just from stepping on all the down trees and, you know, it's hard on the ankles and the shins. We can make a lean to uh, one of these little fir trees. Since okay. we don't have a tent. This one right here? Yeah. Drop it right here. This is a nice flat crown. Yeah, and we'll trim the underside branches and we'll lay them over the top. Okay. Start pushing. I can't believe how sharp that is. Yeah. Oh, good, sturdy. That was just our heat reflected up towards us. Good thinking. That's country camping. That there is right out of the SAS survival guide. never in my life seen these before. It's unbelievable. It's amazing. The firefighters have packed it in, but man trackers armed with infrared binoculars, scoping the darkness for his sleeping prey. in like rabbits it's morning in the Yukon chase day two an encounter with man tracker forced the prey to make camp off course today the temperature will drop and they have lots of ground to make up thermometer on my watch and it reads minus two outside but it's definitely only zero in here my head being pretty cold all the blood rushes to my head feels like my eyes are all puffy and my nose is all puffed up that's just from the cold hopefully kirchie has got the eagle eye on today and we have eyes in the back of our head and we're gonna stick a little closer to the trails I think and uh, hopefully we'll see you next at the end of the finish line. And we're gonna beat this man, Tracker. The prey have to hide any trace of their campsite. The quicker Man Tracker finds it, the quicker he'll catch up. We're gonna go uh, down the trail. We think they're farther in front of us yet. We jumped them last night and they're kinda headed that way, so we're gonna carry on that way. See if we can find their camp. I'll get this side here. Oh, cut. Not so obvious. 
hopefully Brian will, uh, you know, he'll pay more attention to, you know, the horse being right on his back. As long as he so. approaches from the left, I'm okay. I'm a little bit deaf on the right hand side, so. Keep on trucking. Yeah. The prey lost critical time bushwhacking on day one. They have to move quickly. They travel on open trails, trading in speed for the risk of exposing themselves. Something doesn't look quite right here. We got a lot of green limbs down here. Looks like somebody's cut a tree down. That's the only green tree down there. Couldn't have picked a greener tree. There's a drag mark right there. They probably cut that tree down right there. They might have camped right here. <laughs> There's a lot of dirt on that tree. Look at that rock. There's no way that would be there natural. That tree was just cut down last night. They've tried to throw some dirt on there, cover that up. <laughs> Look at this. They forgot to color this piece. Fits like a glove. Paragonsils. This drag mark's pretty fresh. You can see here the, the undisturbed soil. It's almost hard. This stuff is just really, really loose. So they've drugged that tree down there, the buggers. Well, if they were trying to be sneaky, they were careless at the same time. If you only looked eight feet around, you wouldn't have noticed that they'd even slept there. They did a pretty decent job. But there was a bunch of sand, and we found their tracks. We followed them down the trail, and within a half a mile, it gets to the power line again. Krishi, stay here. I'll go up and have a look, and then I'll call you up if it's clear. Stay low. OK, I think we're good. See, there's a stick right here that's got a fresh chunk off it, but we'll check across the other side here and see if we can pick up some kind of a trail. We've got the odd track here and there. This stuff makes Cambodia look like Kansas. Okay, let's get back up to the power line path. This is really dangerous being uh, out in we the open a, like this. We've got a fence right here. We know that we have protection on both sides of us. We want to make this easier today on us because our bodies are still trying to recover from yesterday. I might not look like it, but I used to be a sprinter. Sprinting to the freezer for more ice cream, maybe. <laughs> I don't think I ate enough yesterday. I'm going to try and make up for that today. I am getting hungry. But I must eat. If you like Douglas and MacArthur, we're gonna kick some ass today. We're planning a big sprint for the finish. So we gotta have a little bit left in the tank. Oh wait, there they are. They're about two Ks ahead of us, right on the right in the middle of the power line. They're standing right out in the middle. They're probably a little stiff and sore from last night, so they're they're taking the, the easiest road. Right. There ain't much of us showing, but I think they spotted us. If we don't move, we'll get away with not being uh, seen. They'll think it's just a tree or a stump they've missed. All right, Kirchie sees he thinks he sees something up there. Let's zoom right in up there on the left. No, it's an evergreen. Is it an evergreen? It's a man tracker evergreen. Sure looks like a horse from back here. No, just that man tracker tree. Because, see, now we don't have to care about what's between here and where they are. We just go to where we know they are. The prey can escape by diving into the bush, so Man Tracker can't attempt a capture. But he's got the advantage. It's the first time he's spotted the prey without them seeing him. And he knows exactly which way they're headed. You can see on the far hill, we're heading into rain. That's definitely going to change things. Be just sit nice and tight in these areas, eh? Uh -huh. Waiting for us. Right here is where we saw them.
Yeah, that's a pretty decent try. I hear somebody talking. You can be honest right now. Hey, Kirch. Yeah. There's a good path right down here. See that on your map? What? That trail? No. Two peaks to the north. There's one. Can't tell where the other one is. I don't get frustrated easily. That's more than anything. I was just confused how I could keep end up going west when I was trying to go east. And every 10 minutes, I'd redirect us back east, and we'd be going west again. It's that way. Been around to catch us going that way, to the trail we were on. Yeah. No? You don't think so? Where the yellow trees are? It's pretty open out there. It was just bizarre. It really was a labyrinth in there. It's raining harder, it's getting colder, and the prey are lost in a maze of unmarked trails. Confused, cold, disoriented, and time is running out. Huh. There's trails going everywhere in here. You want to check your compass? My compass is off. Because I think we're going backwards. And I really have no idea where we are on this map. <laughs> I have no idea where we are on this map. It's chase day two, with less than four hours left to go. The prey are lost, and man trackers lost track of them. We, we've gotten ourselves into a, a maze of trails here. We actually came into an area where uh, it was a maze of these uh, fire cuts. We thought we were heading in the right direction, and they, these things would curve all around, and next thing you know, it would send us in another direction, and then we'd be going, and then it almost like we were circling. You could jump out any time right now. Well, yeah, there's, there's definitely hoof prints, fresh hoof prints on this ground here. And it, to make it worse, there was hoof prints in there. So I don't know if it was his hoof prints or somebody else that was riding in there, but we knew somebody on a horse was close by. I can hear something, but I can't tell what it is. Where do we come down? Down there. But we, we didn't hit the road. We sort of headed this way. I think we've come back up onto this path. There's a big valley. A steep drop. There's a river over there. Big river. Zigging and zagging in these woods has cost us a lot of time. Mm -hmm. We have to take advantage of these open areas and run it. Yeah, I agree. Otherwise, we're not going to make it. Well, there's no tracks down there. We'll go this way and see if we can pick something up. We couldn't find any tracks, so we had to check every trail. We'd, we'd go north for a mile and come back, and then we'd go south for a mile and bebop around. You got to be in these trees. We're going to have to do a little run when we get on the road to make up some time. There's no way these guys are going to be bushwhacking through this stuff. There's 100 trails going every direction in here. They're going to be on one of those trails. All we have to do is figure out which one. Just pure luck if we ever see them for the rest of the day. Man Tracker is circling the section of bush that he saw the prey head into. He doesn't know where the finish is, but he knows they're running out of time. He can't find any trace of them. Step up here. A good call coming down here, Kirch. I'm pretty sure that this will lead straight out. You all right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, it's not too much further. There are horses doing circles around us. Yeah. Giggling. Let's keep it going, Kirchie. Yeah. All I'm saying is let's just burn rubber then. It ain't over till it's over. All right, this is it. Let's start running. We can do it. 
keep it going. The rain works to man tracker's advantage. Mother Nature gives him a decisive clue, and it's the turning point in the chase. Yeah, we got several tracks here. The next step here, they've uh, broken that crust. What they've done is they've busted this hard, wet layer, and they've got down underneath to that dry, sandy layer. First of all, it gives us a direction to travel, so it also gives us a timeline. The way it's raining, that track's probably only 10, 15 minutes old because there's hardly any drops in it, which is good. We needed this. Before we're ahead of them, we're gonna run smack dab right into them as they come out of the bush. I hope so. I don't see hoof marks anywhere on this road. So he's either riding off the road, or he's found a way to circle around in front of us, or he's not up here at all. But we're definitely headed in the right direction. And you know what? When I train at home, I train in the woods like that. If I have to run full out the rest of the way, leaping over logs, I'll do it. I, I'm ready for this. Come on, man, tracker, bring it on. It's less than three kilometers to the finish and under three hours to go. And man trackers chasing the prey into dense bush. Enough of this damn bushwhacking. Man. Congratulations. You too, man. We came close. You guys have been going through hell, haven't you? We've been bushwhacking. You've been doing a shitload of stuff. And just running through all this thick stuff, it was like what running through spider webs. Big, thick spider webs. And I just couldn't outrun the horse. You can't outrun the horse. I'll bet you it's 200 feet behind us one second and 10 feet behind us the next. So, because once he turned those horses on, they move fast. It was like a Superman dive. That's what I was calling it. I ended up rolling, but uh, you get going with your momentum and they keyed on me. They figured, this guy's going down. We'll go get him. I don't know where the end is, but it's, uh, it's north. North from here. You gonna find your way to the road? Yeah, I've been there. At the end of two days, even people in decent shape, you know, they run 50, 75 yards through the trees and then they just bail. That's enough. You know, I've had it. I asked Brian afterwards, I said, you know, how much farther could you have gone? And he just looked at me and said, until I couldn't go any farther. I had my horse three feet from his back for 50 yards. And he wasn't slowing down. Do you think he believed me when I told him it was north of here? 
I doubt it. We talked to Brian for 30 seconds or a minute. And I said, so how far are you from the finish line? And he told me two to three K. And he said straight north, but his head pointed south. I just missed getting caught by a man tracker. Brian got caught. He just left about a minute ago. I don't have a compass. I gotta make it to the finish. I gotta get out here. So uh, basically we're gonna go back to Brian and see if this guy has a conscience and maybe he's circled back to see if his buddy got caught or not. I'm hoping I'm not anyway. After us running him down like that, I can't imagine he'd have a hell of a lot of energy. He knows that the finish line is at the end of this road, about two kilometers. Hopefully he's stuck with that plan. And uh, he's hiding there, waiting for his opportunity to bolt. I'm going to bushwhack. I'm going to stay off the road, because the horses are just, they're just tuning around this spot right now, because they're trying to get me. So I got to get moving. I got to get warm. I'm freezing cold here. Brent drops his pack and poncho. Stealth, not speed, will win him the chase. Can't be more than 50 yards from us right now. Just everything's so thick. Can't, uh, can't hear nothing. Can't see anything moving. feet away from me. I can't believe how close we were. We thought we were two kilometers away. We were like 600 meters. I know. 600 meters. He was 20, maybe 25 feet away from me. I was ducking in evergreen. I thought for sure he was going to find me. I heard you talking to him and everything. I thought for sure he was going to get me. Infamous man tracker. Good job, buddy. Yeah, great job. Thanks. Good, good job. Hey, nothing I could do about it, right? I mean, I ran as best as I could, and he caught me. And yeah. These guys are awesome. They're machines. All the crap they went through, and they still had enough 
gem left to, uh, to give us a hell of a chase at the end.